But if not me and Pastor Key is back to let you know this time it's going to work in your favor. I know you've been going. Praise the Lord all. Thank you for joining me again. I pray as this message meets you that everyone is staying prayed up, growing in the Lord, staying in the word, and just seeking what it is God has for your life. Before we get into our study, you know, we always begin with prayer. So let's bow our heads together and look to the Lord. Father, we thank you for this gathering today, Father. A day that's strange and unknown to us, Father, but is known to you. Father, we ask you to touch us from the soles of us to the ground of our heads, Father. And let everything about us fall in line with your word our hearts, our spirit, our bodies, in the name of Jesus. Father God, touch our families far and near. Keep them covered in your blood, Father. Keep your angels encamped around them. Father, we look to you right now, Father God, asking you to give us the understanding of your word, Father. Give us wisdom from this life in the name of Jesus. And Father, bless us to interpret the word the way you send it in the name of Jesus. Not the way we decide to receive it, but according to your word, which is the only truth. Father, we humbly come to you with heads bowed and hearts looking to you, asking you to increase as we decrease, Father. Touch us in this new day, Father God, and bless us, Father God, to just stay in your word and grow together. So I'm so happy to see another day. I know you guys are too, and I'm happy that you are here with me. So today, our topic is going to be on something that a lot of people ask. Now, a lot of people may feel like this is a question that the unsaved posed, but I believe, I really believe that the saved actually poses this question more than they would like to admit. And I believe that it's something that they really won't admit out loud because of the fear of being transparent or the fear of someone thinking that, that person has not um, elevated to where they believe they should be. But God has taught us to be humble, to be lowly, and to not think high-minded of ourselves because only he defines what anointance is, not man. Just because you don't know what someone else might know does not mean that you're less anointed. Just because you may not feel what someone feels at the same time does not mean that you're not as elevated. What God has for you is for you, and it's very personal. So we have to trust God to give us what he has for us. And never, ever, ever feel like someone is higher or further than you are in the word of God because it does not work according to what we think we see, we think we hear, we think we know, or we think we feel. It all goes according to God, and it's a spiritual thing. No one can determine who's on a higher spiritual level. It may be different, but not necessarily higher nor lower. And in the body of Christ, we are not in competition, but we are together as iron sharpens iron. So, in saying that, the question is, how do I reach God? Now, that's a question that I know a lot of saved people ask. And they may not ask it all the time, but they will ask it during times of hardship during times when they need something miraculous to happen right away, at a time where they're confused, at a time where they feel like things aren't moving as they should, or if they feel like something that they felt was promised to them did not come to pass. But God is a God that cannot lie. Because, so just because it hasn't yet doesn't mean it won't. Or just because you didn't recognize it doesn't mean it didn't happen. So we have to learn to look with our spiritual eyes, the ones that cannot fail, the ones that are perfected and sees imperfection because our natural eyes will deceive us. Case in point, have you ever been walking down the street or on the bus or driving a car in your travels and you see someone that looks just like someone else that you knew? Now, not the fact that they actually resemble the person, but from a distance, you thought that that person was that person. It was something about them. Maybe it was the way they walk their haircut, their style of dress. It was something other than the facial features. And that's what I'm talking about because from a distance we think things are one way. But when God gives us a closer look, we see the truth. 
So as we break into this bread of the word, we're going to find out what that closer look is. And it's how do I reach God? And I say that also because there are so many different things out there. So many different things that are spoken over people's lives that are not truth. So we have to go into the word for ourselves and find out what the truth is. It's not complicated. It's not hard. We just have to seek and ask God what it is he's telling us. So please turn to your word. Open your books. Pull it up on your notebook, your laptop, your tablet. However, remember I use the King James Version. Always have your word out. No matter who's talking to you, no matter who's teaching, preaching, no matter what, always have your word in front of you. You must stand approved before God. Our first scripture is John 14 and 6, and it reads, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That was clear and to the point. How do I reach God? I have to go through Christ. Simple as that. There was no special formula. There was no special genie. No black magic. No white magic. No kind of formula, nor strategy, nor something that I had to conjure up to know how I reach God. That's awesome. And it's personal. It's personal. So when we ask ourselves the question, God, how do I reach you? I feel like I can't get to you. I feel like you don't hear me. I feel like you're not coming when I ask. Ask it in Jesus' name because it has to go through him. Simple as that. If you believe him and him also, it will get to God, whatever it is, and you will reach him. Let's move to the next scripture. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man. Christ Jesus. That's 1 Timothy 2 and 5. That just reiterates what the first scripture said. That we have to go through Christ. Christ, sorry. There's one God. One mediator between God and man. And that's Christ Jesus. And that's comforting to hear because how many times have you prayed and you're in such pain or confusion that all you can do is moan? Or you just don't know the words to say? And all you can do is cry out God's name. Well, sometimes it just hurts so bad, nothing comes out. Well, thank God for the mediator, which is Christ Jesus. He knows exactly what your heart is saying, and he carries the message. Thank God for a God that can read our hearts. Because I remember growing up, and we were going through certain things, and having certain hardships and troubles, you know, in your home. And your parents would say something like, well, I don't know what you want because I'm not a mind reader. How gracious is God that he can read all of that? Thank God. Most of our problems in this world would be conquered if parents could have read their children's mind and read their hearts. Because then they would be able to minister to those situations. But we all know, because of the fall of man, we're not perfect. So thank God for the perfected perfection and the perfect mediator which is Christ Jesus. He goes in between for us. We don't have to worry about it. We believe in him. He will stand in between for us and get that message through. And he is the lifeline. He carries those prayers back and forth. And we are so blessed to have him. Let's move on to our next scripture. For th I'm sorry. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me and any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. That's John 10, 7 through 9. What an awesome scripture. God didn't say, I am, I have a door that you have to open. He says, I am the door. I am the door. No, no, you cannot enter into another room without going through the door. And if Jesus Christ is the door, you will not be passing through unless he opens. 
Simple as that. Simple as that. And he also speaks of the sheep. I am the door of the sheep, meaning he's a keeper. He keeps us. Nobody's coming through that door to harm his sheep. He is the great shepherd. No one will get through. He says, all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. So all of those fake, unreal people and things that came before and said that they were the king almighty, they were a god, they were an idol, they were all robbers and thieves. So they lied. And at the same time, God still protected his children. The sheep couldn't hear them because the door had not opened. Jesus Christ is that door that protects his sheep. So we can never say, oh, we're not protected. Oh, Lord, where is our protection? Jesus, I needed protection and you weren't there. He says he is the door. Not open the door. He is the door. And I love that. That's awesome to me that he is the door. Who else do you know can call themselves a door? Have you ever tried to be a door? If you do, there's somebody that can always knock you down. But in Christ Jesus, no one can knock that door down. Thank God. Thank God. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. So once we accept him as our Lord and Savior, we are in. And once we are in, we are kept, we find pasture. That means we can go in and out freely and we will always have something to eat. Always have something to feast on. Always have our needs met. Always. He said pasture. And when you think of pasture, you think about animals grazing. You think about them without a care in the world because they know exactly what they need will be provided. Even when they lay their head down, they're comfortable. And if a mighty God would do that for the animals, what more do you think he would do for you? His greatest and most loved creation. I love God today. I pray that you guys are following me with this message, and I pray that you feel it, because this is for someone who has been feeling that their needs haven't been met, who has been feeling that God is not listening to them, who has been on their knees and hands, who have been crawling and begging and prying and feeling like, God, why can't I reach you? He says, you don't need to reach me. I'm already there with you. There's nothing that you're going through that I don't know about. There's nothing that you're going through that I won't fix. Just keep trusting God. Keep trusting him. Keep trusting him. It can't get any deeper than that. He is there. He won't leave you. He won't fail you. Just stand and wait for the outcome. Just wait it out. It's going to get better. I promise it will get better. And I'm not just saying this. I'm saying it from experience. We go through that sometimes. We have our seasons. Sometimes it seems like the seasons never end. But we serve a God. We serve a God who is there and is faithful to his word. So let's keep finding out together how we reach him. Next scripture. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. That's 1 John 2 and 23. So God is clearly telling us. Jesus is saying that if you deny the Son, you deny God. Because there's no way to God but through His Son. They are one and the same. They cannot be separated. Just like we cannot be separated from the love of God. We cannot be separated. It says, but he that acknowledges the Son have the Father also. So if you acknowledge Christ, you have the Father. So therefore, those that walk around and say, I love God, but I don't believe in Jesus. Uh-oh. It's clearly stated in the Word. I didn't make that up. I didn't create that. It's in the Word. It's for me too. And it's the truth. It's a clear and present truth. It's been the truth from the beginning. It's the truth now. And it will be the truth in the end. That will never change. Whether we agree or disagree, whether we like it or not. It remains the same. The word of God is the truth. 
1 John 2 and 23. That was that address for that scripture. And the last scripture is, He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. That's 1 John 5 and 12. All, all dynamic and strong scriptures that are straight to the point, and they are all related. They all related. That's what I love about them. All of these scriptures tie into one another because it all brings us back to the fact that if you don't have, nor believe, nor accept, nor love, nor trust the Son, then you have not God. It can't get any plainer than that. He only had one beloved Son that he sent here to die for us because of our sins. There's no way around it. We have to accept Jesus Christ. And in accepting Jesus Christ, that is how we reach God. When I pray in Jesus' name, I have reached God. When I have faith in Jesus, I have reached God. When I am cleansed in the blood of the Lamb, I have reached God. We have to understand that in this walk, there is no special formulas, no mumbo-jumbo, no, no weird chance to get to God. It's simple. Wherever you are, whatever your state of being, God will meet you there. There is no one that's too filthy for him. No one that's too dirty. No one who has went too far or have gone astray that he won't accept. Because he loves his children. And from this day forward, I pray, beloved, that you remember that we reach God by accepting his son, by praying to his son, and understanding that he is there for us. God will never leave nor forsake any of his children. It's impossible for him to do those things. He cannot forsake us. He can't lie to us. He can't do any of the things that man has done. I don't care what your life looks like right now. We are all dealing with some hardships. All of us. But Christ said, there's nothing that you can go through that is not known to him. He feels it. And whatever you're going through is for your good. It's going to work out. It's going to make you better. It's going to lift you. It's going to grow you. It's going to make you wiser. But don't give up. Keep looking to the sun. Keep reaching for him. Because that is the only way to God. That is the only way. So when that question arises in your head again, God, how do I reach you? I really need this. I'm about to lose my home, God. I don't know what's going on with my children, God. My bank account is low, God. I'm looking for a job. Dealing with sickness, dealing with ailments, dealing with abuse, anything that you may be going through, losing your car, anything, your pet, anything that's dear to you, know that once you pray in the name of Jesus, you have already reached God. And your words, your prayers does not fall on deaf ears. God hears you and he will answer. He will answer. He is a perfect God and he makes no mistakes. Beloved, I pray that you got a clearer understanding today on how to reach God. If you were expecting for it to be something where I said some fancy words or some fancy cliches or just trying to show off wisdom or some, some, some high words just to fascinate you, well, I'm sorry for the disappointment, but I'm going to come with the truth, the truth of the living God which is simple and plain. God does not toy with our intellect. He does not play around with words to see if we can figure out what it is. He does not do that. He's straight and he's to the point because he wants us to get it right. We thank God for everything, every single thing that he has done in our lives and everything that he's going to do. So I pray that you reflect on this day and think about the things that you've gone through today and how he brought you through. And think about how your prayers do reach him. Think about the times where you were lacking and you prayed and he blessed. Think about when something fell short and you thought it would never come through. And just in the nick of time, he did it. You reached God. You 
you reached him in your prayer. And one day, you're going to reach him in heaven face to face. And I can't wait for that glorious day. And I thank you all for tuning in again and spending time with me as we go in prayer and as we read in the word of God and find out all the things that we need for our lives for us to grow and to prosper in every aspect of our lives. So until next time with a new topic, I would like to say I love you all. God bless you and can't wait to see you again. Let's end in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this time that you have come straight from the Bible once again, Father. About healing. Thank you, Father God, for I know this word was for someone. God Father can heal God. depression. Someone needed to hear. He can heal A AIDS and HIV. Father, because they were feeling so lonely. It doesn't matter. They felt like they were at the end of their road and they weren't Father. sure if they were going to throw in the top. But God, but God, you again, Father God. You again. That's all I can say, Father. You again. Whenever we're down, whenever we're hurt, whenever we're stressed, Father, you was a bruise for our always touch. And you always have And you always peace was upon him. And with this thank you for blessings. We are with the strength to go forward. Bless the Lord. Thank you for all the encouragement you sent to me. And and I thank you on this day, Father God. As we come together in these times, all my iniquities and who heals all my diseases. Let your grace and mercy come We give you all the glory, all the honor, if you have and all the praise for all the glory. I bless you.